From its perch about a million miles from Earth, James Webb has captured extraordinary shots of our solar backyard while also peering deep more than 13 billion years into the past at an era when some of the first stars and galaxies were taking shape. But as James Webb delved deep into the first chapters of the Cosmic History book, it found unexpected shreds of evidence that shake our cosmology. Look at unprecedented images of the early universe taken by James Webb, nobody can still hold onto old theories and claim that they are still true. Webb's discoveries present a serious challenge to our best model of how the cosmos evolved. But is the standard model of physics now broken? Join us as we dig deep into how James Webb's view of the ancient universe just shatters our basic understanding of the cosmos. The first billion years of the universe's life were a crucial period in its evolution. In the first moments after the Big Bang, matter and light were bound to each other in a hot, dense soup of fundamental particles. However, a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, the universe expanded extremely rapidly. This expansion eventually allowed the universe to cool enough for light and matter to separate out of their soup, and some 380,000 years later, form hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen atoms appeared as an intergalactic fog, and with no light from stars and galaxies, the universe was dark. This period is known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. The arrival of the first generations of stars and galaxies several hundred million years after the Big Bang bathed the universe in extremely hot UV light, which burned or ionized the hydrogen fog. This process yielded the transparent, complex, and beautiful universe we see today. Astronomers call the first billion years of the universe, when this hydrogen fog was burning away, the epoch of reionization. To fully understand this time period, we study when the first stars and galaxies formed, what their main properties were, and whether they were able to produce enough UV light to burn through all the hydrogen. The first step toward understanding the epoch of reionization is finding and confirming the distances to galaxies that astronomers think might be responsible for this process. Since light travels at a finite speed, it takes time to arrive at our telescopes. So, astronomers see objects as they were in the past. For example, light from the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, takes about 27,000 years to reach us on Earth, so we see it as it was 27,000 years in the past. That means if we want to see back to the very first instant after the Big Bang, we have to look for objects at extreme distances. Because galaxies residing in this time period are so far away, they appear extremely faint and small to our telescopes and emit most of their light in the infrared. This means astronomers need powerful infrared telescopes like Webb to find them. Prior to Webb, virtually all of the distant galaxies found by astronomers were exceptionally bright and large simply because our telescopes weren't sensitive enough to see the fainter, smaller galaxies. However, it's the latter population that are far more numerous, representative, and likely to be the main drivers to the reionization process, not the bright ones. So, these faint galaxies are the ones astronomers need to study in greater detail. It's like trying to understand the evolution of humans by studying entire populations rather than a few very tall people. By allowing us to see faint galaxies, Webb is opening a new window into studying the early universe. Early galaxies were not like those we know today. The first galaxies were more pristine, composed primarily of hydrogen and helium gas. Over time, their stars would fuse atoms to form heavier elements, and when these stars died in supernova explosions, the heavy elements dispersed throughout the galaxies, enriching them with star stuff, including the elements needed to create life. The first galaxies had yet to settle into majestic spiral patterns or puffy elliptical balls like the galaxies we see around us now. They were far more disordered and much smaller, making them even harder to find. The earliest galaxies we have seen were about 1% the size of our Milky Way, but they were growing rapidly, forming new stars at prodigious rates. Fuel was plentiful back then, early galaxies were bathed in cool streams of flowing hydrogen gas, lured inward by gravity. The galaxies collided with one another and merged frequently, accelerating their growth and triggering new bursts of star formation. As the universe expanded over time, galaxy growth slowed, significant mergers became less frequent, and the gas supply thinned out. This picture is our basic understanding of cosmic history. We are still working to fill in the details, and many questions remain, especially surrounding the earliest times. When did the first galaxies form? How small were they? What did they look like? Were they building blocks of galaxies to come with single large regions of star formation, 
or were they more fragmented and clumpy? Were they all bursting with intense star formation, or were some more relaxed like most galaxies today? Did any early galaxies have time to settle into disks like the Milky Way did, or were they merging too frequently to do so? Will we ever find any filled with pristine hydrogen and helium gas, or did the first supernovae enrich them too quickly with heavier elements? How rapidly did early galaxies build up in mass and numbers, and were they in fact responsible for reionizing the universe? With the results from James Webb, we are taking another step toward answering these questions. Thanks to its red eyes, James Webb is adding a bounty of distant galaxies beyond Hubble's reach and revealing the early universe in far greater detail than previously possible. Webb's images of the early universe have acted like an ocean swell, delivering new waves of evidence. A new research using the James Webb data found that dwarf galaxies in the early universe often look flat, with a prolate, elongated along one axis, or very narrow oblate ovals shaped like a surfboard, whereas others have a more frisbee-like oblate appearance. These galactic frisbees seem to grow more abundant as the universe ages, as do the compact spheroidal-shaped galaxies. As Viraj Pandya, a Columbia University astronomer and lead author of a new paper describing the research, said in a press statement, roughly 50 to 80 percent of the galaxies we studied appear to be flattened in two dimensions. They seem to be very common in the early universe, which is surprising since they are uncommon nearby. The discovery was made using data from Sears or Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science, a James Webb program to push back the veil and probe the lives of the oldest, faintest galaxies in the universe. It's an era spanning from 600 million years after the Big Bang to 6 billion years later, during which the galaxies that we see in the universe around us today formed, evolved, and matured. Sears builds on previous work by the Hubble Space Telescope, which studied the early universe in its deep field images and its cosmic assembly near-infrared deep extragalactic legacy survey program. Hubble found that massive galaxies in the early universe tended to take on the form of oblate spheroids, not dissimilar to the elliptical galaxies of today. Less massive and hence fainter galaxies were more difficult for Hubble to detect, but from what it could see, many of them took on an elongated appearance, consisting of chains of brighter blobs, whereas other irregularly shaped dwarfs were nicknamed tadpoles. The observation of galaxies growing massive at an astonishing rate poses a profound question, how did they achieve such size in such a short time? Evidence suggests that the rapid expansion of supermassive black holes during that era might hold the key. Nearly all modern galaxies, including our Milky Way, harbor these colossal entities at their cores, hinting at their crucial role in shaping galactic structures. If black holes in the early universe underwent swift mass accumulation, it could elucidate the abundance of massive galaxies seen in telescopic images. Yet, this explanation merely replaces one mystery with another, prompting further inquiry into how these black holes achieved such monumental sizes so swiftly. Alternatively, an unknown mechanism in the early universe might have catalyzed rapid star formation, accounting for the galaxy's massive and luminous appearance. Another hypothesis posits the presence of population three stars, the universe's first stars, which are anticipated to be brighter and more massive than their descendants, potentially hidden within these ancient galaxies. However, if none of these hypotheses fully align with observations, it may signal a deeper flaw in our understanding of the universe. Perhaps the anomalies uncovered by observations, such as those made by the James Webb Space Telescope, signify gaps in our current models, such as the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model. Discrepancies in the expansion rate of the universe and other phenomena hint at the need for additional components in our cosmological framework. To unravel these enigmas, future observations are imperative. Confirming the true massiveness of these galaxies and expanding our observations across wider celestial expanses can provide clarity. Nevertheless, for now, we are left to grapple with the enigmatic presence of these colossal entities at the edges of space and time. In other astronomical discoveries, the Hubble Space Telescope detected a distant exoplanet with a water-rich atmosphere, though its extreme temperatures render it inhospitable. Additionally, researchers from MIT have identified 18 instances of black holes tearing apart stars, shedding light on the prevalence of these events across various galaxy types and their implications for our understanding of black hole demographics. These findings mark significant strides in unraveling the mysteries of our universe, underscoring the ongoing pursuit of knowledge in astronomy. Information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so 
you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content everyone's. Support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve as always thanks for watching. And we will see you next time.